you know, the last 10 years, I've, I've been blessed to be in the craft industry, and I've seen, as we all have, the largest boom in Texas in the craft industry. Yeah. I'm talking not just craft beer or craft cider, I'm talking craft food, I'm talking sure. craft cocktails. You opened up right in the beginning, I should say, right after the beginning of the boom of craft beer. Mm -hmm. Has that propelled your business to do tenfold, maybe, what you ever thought it, you'd ever become? So, it, it was a good time for that because people have been more open to exploring different foods and different beverages and, and things of that nature. Um, but yeah, it, it was definitely the right time. And we saw craft, craft breweries try in early 2000s and 90s and 80s and stuff and just they couldn't succeed the market uh, wasn't ready for them so it was the timing the timing was perfect um, you know we would have been even further along if it didn't take us 26 months to open our original location but um, but yeah I mean Dallas has been super supportive of us um, and you know we're gonna keep making as much as we can as long as people keep drinking it I don't find that a problem. People yeah. tend to love your drink. People tend to love your thing. And you're, you're coming out with a whole new line right yeah. now. Can you tell me about the, this next line that you're having? It's, it seems to be more in the uh, wine uh, facility, exactly. wine district. Yeah, so um, this is actually created by four women internally um, that wanted to create a product. Uh, and it was something they were making here and we were consuming here and started selling it on tap at the Cidercade. And um, so we ultimately, about six months ago, decided to, to roll it out uh, to the market. And it's a, it's a line of canned wine. It's called Uncommon Wine. Um, they call it Unco. And uh, it's four different wines as of now. And we really innovated on, on, on packaging in regards to the fact that it's all in, it's all in cans. Uh, we in innovated in regards to um, the ABV, so everything is like a little under 7%, they're all 6.9%. So now, you know, your person drinking wine versus people drinking beer um, don't have to get their four to six ounce pour while someone else gets to drink a pint. They can actually, they can do the same. Um, so you'll often see this on tap as well um, around Texas here in the next couple weeks. And uh, at that point, you will get into 12 to 16 ounce pours. So, so innovative on packaging, ABV, and also, you know, we did what is kind of a faux pas in the wine world, but we don't really care what they think, and that's that we added adjuncts to it. So, our our Cabernet has tart cherries and blood oranges in it. Uh, our Chardonnay, Chardonnay has blackberries. Uh, our Pinot Grigio has pineapple and passion fruit, so it's very very tropical. And then our our rosé actually has elderflower in it. So, typically in the wine world, they don't want you to add anything to it, but Hey, we make what we want to drink, so we don't really care. Well, I'm excited to see those in the market. Uh, and I think the entire uh, craft lover of cider is excited to see that in the market, to see craft wine in the market in a can. Uh, it sounds something that's ready to uh, explode in the uh, Bishop Arts, the Bishop Cider world. Um, now, let's go back to your uh, website. You know, I went to your website a couple days ago, which is a fantastic one. You have a really good energy with all of your staff. You explain uh, each individual that works here, what they do and how they're a part of this whole, uh, this whole world that you have created. But I scrolled down and I noticed that you can actually order your beverage and have it shipped directly to your house. And that was mind blowing. I'm thinking how in the world can I literally click on Crackberry and have a case delivered to me dire directly to my door? Can you please tell me what and how in the hell you're doing that? Sure, sure. So, um, so kind of back to where you started. Um, that that cider is um, it's very different in, in how it's created. It, you know, compared to beer, you know, cider is apple based. So we're, we are legally a winery. So anything that is uh, have a base of, of fruit juice is considered wine uh, as far as TABC and TTB. So as a winery, we're legally allowed to. Um, do a lot of things that breweries can't. So we've always been allowed to sell for on-premise and off-premise, um, but you can also ship wine. So uh, on our website, yeah, people are able to, to buy the cider and buy the wine and have it shipped to them. And I think we're currently shipping to about 40 different states uh, around the country right now. So that happened a lot actually when we released our most recent cider, which was, which was the dark side. You know, obviously Star Wars themed cider. Uh, it's a black currant cider. Um, and 
whenever we released that one, and we had a lot of orders coming in from California of people buying it and shipping it out there. Uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool that there's been a lot less lobbying by the distributors in Texas um, against wineries. It's been a lot more against breweries. So you know we've kind of been able to skate by without having a lot of the legal hurdles that breweries have. So yeah, it's a, it's another pretty cool aspect, but. It's one that still surprises people that they can come in like to our facilities, drink on site, and they can take a six pack to go when they leave. Like, it's not, it's not what we're used to in Texas. Like being able to take a six pack at the bar you've been drinking at. So, um, so there's a little bit of a learning curve in that regard as well. Well, speaking of learning curve, uh, you know, if you're a Star Wars fan and you're actually a fan of the dark side, uh, you better well appreciate it because this guy's got a patent. A name called the Dark Side, and it sounds like it's a one hell of a drink to enjoy uh, with um, uh, with your friends and family. Now, start start. Let's go into uh, pairings. What does cider pair with? So, you know, I've been in the beer industry long enough to know what you know an ale does, what the lager does, sure. what the dark or stout porter. You know, you name it, you name it. It goes it goes well with this drink, goes well with this food, and this forth. Can you tell me a little bit about what? A cider might pair well with on the food food end. Sure. So uh, a lot of it's going to depend on the flavor profile. Our, ours differs so drastically. Um, but typically, if you're going to go with something more like a more like a, a, a nice fish dish, you're going to want a drier cider or something like that. But a lot of my favorites are more with Asian food because uh, it just pairs very well with like like Thai food, for example, a, a semi sweet or a sweet cider. Um, but also, they're they're great to cook with. So a lot of people will marinate stuff with our ciders or they'll do reductions with our ciders uh, and even make um, like almost like a, a topping for like a dessert, like Luck does it um, every once in a while with some of their dessert cakes. They'll make a reduction with Crackberry and put it on there. Um, I mean, another cool thing that adds to the versatility of cider is that you can even heat it up and when it's cold outside. So uh, like our Suicider. cider, that's currently not in cans, but it's a, it's a spice cider that we make. Um, is one that a lot of people would heat up on the stove, add a cinnamon stick to it, uh, and, and drink hot. So, actually that's gonna be our, our Q4 seasonal this year is actually a wassail that we're doing that with. So on the can, it'll have instructions on how to heat it up on the stove, um, and you know, it, it, can, it can be served hot, so. Um, but, and and that's, that's funny, because we're actually talking about hard cider here. When I say cider, Cider is non-alcoholic, however, hard cider is alcoholic, so. Yeah, and that's something that everyone debates on because like in, in Europe, they don't ever use the word hard. Like, they have apple juice and they have cider, and cider's the hard stuff. But in America, we had apple juice so long before that it was just like, they were, they were so different that everyone has to stipulate that it's a hard cider versus regular cider. Um, and yeah, so it's, it, there's a lot of that old, old world, new world stuff, because it's similar to our fruit. Um, in Europe, all cider is made with um, what they would call cider apples. They're very, very tart, very, very acidic, and unfortunately, those just aren't grown in America yet. So, you know, we had that issue when we started of, well, well are we going to use cider apples and import them, or would we rather stick to what's grown domestically and support our domestic crop and farmers? And, and that's the route we decided to go. So, all of our fruit is sourced domestically. Um, all of our apples come out of the Pacific Northwest, Washington, Oregon. Um, and even our other fruits, like our cranberry and blackberry, is all domestic as well. So, uh, but yeah, so the apples that we currently use would technically be considered dessert apples or eating apples. They're they're similar to what you find at the store because uh, that's what's grown in America. So, as more cider companies grow and are introduced in America, and you know, it's it's been a recent resurgence in America. I think that a lot more farmers will invest more heavily into traditional cider apples, uh, which will be very beneficial. I mean, we would we'd pay 10 times the price per gallon if someone had that available here. Uh, so I think more people will invest that that direction, and then we'll we'll get a lot more drier ciders uh, with a lot more tannins, a lot more acidity. Um, but as of now, um, we're we're a little more limited on the fruit in America. But you know, it was important to us um, with about 70% of the apple crop and in the world grown in China. Uh, we just, we want to stick to, stick to what, what's grown here. Well, it sounds like, Joel, we can go on and on about how cider's made and, and the growth of cider and, and, and so on and so on, but I really would like to see 
the back of your house. And it's funny that I'm standing behind about 15 or 20 video arcade games. There's in fact over 150 Arcadia games in this facility called Cidercade. And we're gonna go and view that here in a short while. But before we do that, would you show us on how some of your product is made, show us some of the equipment and how you interpret this apple or this fruit into this can or into this, into this beverage. Can you yeah, do that for us? Let's do it. All right, let's, go. let's do it. We'll see, we'll see you guys in the back in a few minutes. 